Today's adventure brings me to Boulder City as the recording of a Saturday, March 11th, 2023. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Behind me is a big horned ram. This is not a real one, but supposedly in this neck of the woods there are some live ones which I'm hoping to be able to see. And there's another one sitting right over here. Well, there, yeah, they're sitting right here. And next to that ram is Danny702. Hello. We are getting properly caffeinated at the moment. Yes. Was it too far of a drive from Vegas over here, like a half hour? Yeah, and I think from the Las Vegas Strip, maybe like 20 minutes. It was pretty quick. Yeah, traffic was good. Tom Devlin's Monster Museum is going to be the first thing on our agenda. I've never been to it. Have you ever been there? I've never been. No, I'm excited. We're going to see some monsters. I'm wearing an appropriate t-shirt here, Kingdom of the Spiders. You kind of, you're kind of looking like you would be like fit for a monster museum. Yeah, you're wearing the U shirt, yeah. which kind of looks like, kind of like a monstery type font. Yeah, like horror movie-ish. Look at this, this a classic truck alert right there. All right, then we're gonna see some other stuff. There's also a Area 52 place that you found out online. We're gonna try to go by there, see a flying saucer perhaps. Maybe. And got coffee and maybe a bite to eat. Who knows? I'm just winging it. The Hoover Dam's pretty close. Have you noticed with most of my videos, I just kind of have no game plan? <laughs> That's okay. There's tons to do. D A N I 702. Her stuff is a lot more uniform and organized than my videos. Usually, but today I, I'm pretty chaotic. Yours, yours is chaotic? <laughs> All right. We're just, we're just winging it again. We're winging it. I'm inviting you to join me in Danny 702. Shall you? So yesterday you did it. <laughs> I, just, I was like, is she going to do it? She's not going to do it. You did it. All right, Ram. A Ram at the dam. Maybe we'll see a Ram at the dam. We're going to go by the Hoover Dam too, probably. Most likely. And if you're looking for this place, just look for the extended hearse here. Right out in front saying Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. The world famous Monster Museum. It has the Vegas logo there. Not too far from Vegas. Let's say probably if traffic was really bad, it'd probably take an hour. But we got over here in about a half hour. One thing I was not expecting was this to be right on a main thoroughfare. For some reason in my mind, based on photos and other videos I've seen of this place, I thought it was kind of kind to be out, in the, not necessarily in the middle of nowhere, but not on a very busy street like this, but it is right here off to the side. There's even a Zoltar machine up there. I saw one of those yesterday. And then out front, Frankenstein's monster. I call him Frankie. I, I call him Frank and Frankenstein for short, even though a lot of people call him Frankenstein's monster. I think it's appropriate to call him Frankenstein. You got the bride up top. And then here is a, and that might be a version of Tom Devlin as Frankenstein right there. And you got the Swamp Thing over there. Check it out. I think that's the sequel to the Swamp Thing. I think that was a Swamp Thing 2 where the Swamp Thing returns out front. And then you got one of the Ectos over here in the corner. And plenty, not only sharp fangs, but pumpkins in the back of here. It's a pumpkin patch. And there's some sort of leather face up there over here in this corner. Another Frankenstein and there's Ash right there, blowing in the wind. I've been wanting to visit this place for years. For years I've been wanting to go here. And I finally made it. I finally made it over to this area. Take a look over here. So you go past Zoltar Speaks. There is Children of the Corn. Corn? <laughs> Children of the Cornhole. Children of the Cornhole. Yes. Oh, that was a fail. That was a big fail. Usually I'm pretty good at this, but. Oh, that was pretty close. All right, here's something I did not realize. I think you were kind of hinting at this yesterday that it was somewhere near Vegas, but Zoltar yeah. was made, created, and born here in Boulder City. I had no idea. Zoltar, everybody thinks of big. We think of Zoltar. What about Dude, Dude, Where's My Car? Was that Zoltan or Zoltar? Was that in Dude, Where's My Car? Yeah, you know, when they're like, I'm just, you know, they go, Zoltar, right? 
Okay. Or Zoltan. I don't really. Zoltar. I get Zoltar and Zoltan confused. I think they're cousins. Now, when you first walk in, there is an arcade off to the side where they have Attack of the Claw, and they have have the House of the Dead Two by Sega. And then there's also a Return of the Swap thing over there in the distance as well. And then, of course, in the main entrance where you pay admission to get in and all that, there's some autographs on the wall. You know, from different horror celebrities and whatnot. There's merchandise, there's like masks, all kind of different things in here. You walk up, pay the admission price to get in, and then you just kind of go through and prepare yourself for the horror of Boulder City, Nevada. The Monster, Monster Museum style. Okay, we are now stepping in. We have gone through the door into the Monster Museum, into this little area over here. It's kind of like, everything's kind of themed, so you can get some photos. You got the Texas Chainsaw here with the hook right up top here you got the chainsaw down here and the hammer yeah if you ever wanted to imitate leatherface you got the you got the chainsaw right there which is yeah that's that's kind of horrifying and down below a little little secrets here with the fake rocks here made of styrofoam it says the entrance is right through here with this ghoulish creature saying come on in this is good photos and videos are permitted they just ask please no flash do not touch the monsters and they won't touch you have a great time with the creatures cadavers freaks and creeps all right here we go we got frankenstein right over here and then directly behind Frankenstein, of course, the mummy over here, Boris Karloff's The Mummy. And there's like little information placards and whatnot that kind of teach you and show you different things on what everything is. Yeah, I almost feel like I'm at HHN right now and I'm expecting this to kind of like jump out at me and like, like actually be like a scare actor. Over here around the back is a claw machine full of pumpkins. Also, skateboarding is allowed here because it's fun. So I'm gonna have to do a little voiceover out here on the porch and describe because there's a there's a lot of music inside from horror films and whatnot. Just kind of like do a quick little short little walkthrough. I was hoping Tom would be here today, but he's elsewhere. But I would love to return at some point and get a little tour inside and show off some of the stuff that he has not only made but also movies that he has worked on. Some of my favorite things inside. I'm just kind of kind of talk about as I scrolled through a little B-roll footage is the from Return of the Living Dead that you need a medical supply. They have like, he has like the, the guy that's in the, in the, I can't remember what it's called, like the, the, the tar man or the, the zombie from Return. That's just kind of what I always refer to him as. But as you're kind of going through, there's like, it's like very iconic films, you know, through the horror genre. Obviously there's Kruger and there's Michael Myers. There's also Grandpa from Texas Chainsaw and Leatherface and all that. There's also Leatherface with the the red backdrop with all the you know the cow horns and whatnot from the first film one of my favorite my favorite horrors is what and whatnot and the different in, incarnations of leatherface throughout it as well and then you go into a whole area of friday the 13th you know the jason Voorhees, different eras of jason Voorhees, not just one particular movie but spanning the whole genre you know, from the first one through jason in space i even believe there's some of those and then gremlins 2 the new batch so I guess there was two of these, which was like the Gremlin Spider, and the Spider wasn't even, as far as I could tell, was not in the, the finished film. And there was two of these. Tom did not make this, but there was another one that was an animatronic that was destroyed on set. And this is the prop from that that was going to be used for like the still photos and the still, the still parts from Gremlins 2, the Spider Gremlin, if you will. And after you go past the Spider Gremlin, you go past into a Hellraiser section with a couple of pinheads and things like that. And then you go past Berryman from The Hills Have Eyes. You kind of walk through past there. And then, of course, one of my, my favorites with the Obey sign. You know, uh, I'm here to chew gobble, I'm, I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass the whole Rowdy Roddy Piper from They Live. They have the, they has like the quote on the side of the wall, but then they have the, the creatures from that as well. And then you got Killer Clowns and you got Ghoulies coming out of the, the bottom of the commode and then Pennywise it. And then there's a whole area of, you're also allowed to film in here, but you just can't take flash photos. But there's a whole area of different movies that Devlin worked on. A lot of the Puppet Master films as well, kind of showcase in, the, in all the different cases all the way through. And going, it, it's definitely a pretty extensive area. You go through and you see Reagan from The Exorcist, and then you get Toxie from The Toxic Avenger. So you kind of kind of focus on, I guess not really necessarily worthy of a strobe light warning, but there's a couple of flickering lights as you're kind of going through here as well. And then the Wolfman, Lon Chaney Jr., the Wolfman. There's also the creature from the Black Lagoon. And then the Munsters. There's a whole section of the Munsters as well. 
and critters as well as like close up of one of the critters and also creep show as well this is just kind of like i guess the best of the museum it really definitely something you have to kind of come in and experience on your own and you end it you end at nosferatu but then after nosferatu there's like a whole section which i was told by the guy working at the front desk that is a new area that they have created into a theater so there's like a whole theater that you can kind of go through and they'll they'll play different stuff they had like a clip of tom savini explaining like how he makes his monsters and whatnot so you can just sit here and enjoy like learning about how the movies are made and i guess maybe if they do like movie premieres here or maybe they do certain movie nights there's also a haunt that takes place here in october which i'd love to come back for that one day as well to come back for the haunt all in all definitely worth stopping off and i will be back hopefully i can come back when tom's here and he can kind of show me some of the stuff and get like a personal tour i'd love to do that at some time but glad i stopped off here i've been wanting to come here for a long time i ended up purchasing a t-shirt also it's like fed it was there's a there actually has some pretty good merch in there there was another one I wanted to get, but I couldn't decide on which one to buy. Yeah, this one's cool because you can totally see the name. Yeah. I know. There's there's a couple other ones that I really wanted to get, but Stands out. I went with this one. I like the green fangs. What did you think of the museum? It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. scary in there. It was really spooky. Yeah, like I said, I, I kept thinking one of the models were gonna jump. Out I think of because they had they had the music really all the music from the movies blaringly loud. It kind of added to the ambiance. Yeah, and every time you got there. a little bit ahead of me, like I would get really spooked out. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> so, is it, you know, you, the thing about this place, you can really sink your teeth into it. You can really sink your teeth into it. I also got a sticker as well. It's in this bag here. Let me show the sticker. If I can get it out of here. I think it's in the bag. What's in the bag? Here it is. So they do a haunt here every October also. Yeah. So they do like... They do like a full haunt. Yeah, I'm coming back. You should come back for that in October. Like that. All right, awesome. Ooh, this says, beware of vampire on top of this here. It's Grandpa Munster, right there. Of course, the creature. A lot of creature nods in there, which is awesome. It's kind of like the shirt I just got. Got the teeth on it. Yeah, if you're in to the horror genre, I highly recommend if you're near Vegas, it's about 30 miles, about a half hour, let's say an hour with traffic. Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. Highly recommend, really, really awesome place. Movie props, creations, you know, things that he worked on, but also creations of famous films that he also designed. Not, in, not, to, not screen used, but stuff that just he did as homages to those films that you kind of do the walkthrough. I will be back at some point here. I will definitely be back. Get a little detail walkthrough, it'll be fun. Oh, there's another classic car alert. I like these old hotel neon signs, like the El Rancho Boulder there. We are now downtown. I guess this would be the downtown, Boulder City. There's a place called Flying Saucer. Well, this is the Flying Saucer, not at Area 51, but at Area 52. You can kind of stick your head up right through there. Pretend you're in the flying saucer itself. Help me! I think yours turned out better. I think I went too far up. Oh, really? I think I went too far up into the pod. There you go. I was trying to do that again. Alien Highway. Area 52 exposed. Look at this little plastic alien here. Aliens are us. Hoover Dam Lake Mead, Boulder City, Nevada. They do exist. 
Oh, is this a far side? I can't tell if that's Gary Larson or not. I mean, that looks, looks kind of Gary Larson-esque. Oh, there we go. That's Gary Larson right there. Yeah, I love far side. Across the way over here, kind of an Indian jewelry place. Off of the distance, also the... Wow, look what's on sale. Huh, ooh, over in here looks to be a real alien inside this window right there. Take a look. We come in peace. Oh, you do? Okay, good. It's good. Would not want to be around you if you weren't going in peace, coming in peace. I hear a leaf blower. Kind of a cute little downtown area. Look at these turtles here. This is a very unusual enter and exit sign down here. So it says enter and exit over the top of each other, but then you can't because there's this big tree in the way. So there's an arrow going exit and enter. The enter is written over the exit and vice versa, but you can't go either way because there's this tree in the way. That's weird, right? Yeah, I feel like you'd get stuck in the middle. Right? You think that's because of the aliens? Oh, you you wouldn't know which way to go? <laughs> like going in, going out. I don't think you can do either. Yeah, you can. It's just there's a tree there and then there's a flying saucer right there. I really like this little downtown stretch through here. Just the vibe of this place is cool. They got candy and fudge, homemade ice cream and malts. And check out this old neon, this cafe, great American food at the coffee cup right over there. There's a lot of different sculptures around town giving some of the different jobs when they were building the Hoover Dam. Some of them more mundane than others, like this gentleman here, who was responsible for keeping the outhouses kept and supplied with paper and swept out. So they have this little sculpture, an homage to this guy who would take toilet paper and fill all the outhouses up during the construction of the Hoover Dam. He's got his broom up there for sweeping up the outhouses. And then he's just got a whole roll of toilet paper here to fill the... Nothing worse than going to an outhouse and not having toilet paper. Yeah, the thing you think most about are the guys who are like, you know, bringing the concrete, things like that. You know, the, the jobs that you would, the first and foremost you think would be more important, but really probably nothing more important than supplying toilet paper. I mean, that's like, if you, yeah, if you don't have a fresh roll of toilet paper, this, you, don't have a good, you don't have a good day on the job. Toilet paper guy. What did you just notice was right next to this? The public restrooms. The public restrooms are right here. Not an outhouse, but the public restrooms are right here. <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. And since we're close to the Hoover Dam, everything kind of has the word dam in the name. So you got the feather here, then up top, so you have this like this bookstore. It's the, it's the Dam Roast House and Browder Bookstore. Everything's got the name. You know, it's got this very clever play on words. Boulder City Fire Department going by. And there are Zoltars everywhere around here. There's also this Leo the Lion. For 50 cents you can ride from Bonnie Springs Ranch. Enjoy a piece of history with Leo the Lion. And there's a lot of Zoltars. I've never seen so many Zoltars in a square mile footage. They're just like, they're, on, they're everywhere. Look at this classic vintage one too, this horse. Hey, you see these in front of supermarkets. Probably too heavy to ride on these now though. And here is a Tiki Zoltar Zoltan of sorts too. This is called the Big Kahuna. And he's got like a Tiki shirt on. He got Trader Vic's and everything on there too. This piece of artwork is called Wild One right here. Uh, I'm riding a motorcycle. Oh goodness, wow, what is going on here? This bear is going after this mountain man. This mountain man right here has got a frying pan. Oh, and I just saw the ambulance for Boulder City Fire Department. Here comes the fire truck rolling through as well. But look at this horse right here. It's very disturbed by this bear 
Coming out to this mountain man who just had some breakfast, obviously. This has got the frying pan up top. He's got the epic, epic beard kicking right there as well. This is, this is titled, if it isn't one thing, it's your mother. If it isn't one thing, it's your mother. Which one's the mother? The bear or the horse? Or the mountain man with the frying pan? That reminds me of Tangled. Remember how the female lead in Tangled, she would always have the frying pan? Rapunzel. He's gonna breathe, right? Yeah, oh he does. <laughs> Who's the mother though? I don't understand this. Oh look, there's a little baby cub down here. Oh, maybe maybe this is the mother. And she she is protecting her youth. Interesting. Oh, it even says it right here. It isn't one thing, it's your mother right here. On there too. Oh, he's got his foot and a cup of coffee. Yeah. All right, I see what's going on. He just, he's having caffeine withdrawals because he sees down here the bear has stepped in his coffee pot. Okay, I know that face. I totally understand that face. This is titled Egg Sighted. Excited, it's like Humpty Dumpty, but instead of sitting on a wall, he's sitting on books. Discovering the unexpected, expected, off the wall thinking and exciting solutions. That. I'm at a loss for words. This is a desert tortoise. And the Boulder Theater is right up here. It doesn't look like it's playing anything. It just says God Bless America. And a very vintage, retro looking Boulder City florist sign next to it. In fact, I don't even know if the theater is even still open anymore. It looks like it's just a florist shop now. But this is where the theater used to be, and the sign is still there. I'm seeing the Blues Brothers over here. I'm seeing Marilyn. I'm seeing Elvis Presley. I'm seeing a pirate. And I'm also seeing Darth Vader over there in the corner as well. Vader! All right, it appears as if it really is still a theater. It's just all fenced off. Right now it's not open at the moment, but it appears as if the theater is still tucked away back in here. There are some leaves down in there, so I don't know if they're still doing movies or anything. Maybe it's just a, it might not be a movie theater. Maybe it's just like a theater for plays. It's on the National Register of Historic Places, as shown on that sign right there. National Registry of Historic Places, not going anywhere. There's a bird up there. Hello, there's a couple birds. Hello, bird. Talk, say it hi. Very talkative. Very talkative. All right, bird. We're gonna see if we can go find some longhorn sheep or rams over in the park. Oh, they're still over there. They are. Okay, thank you. The, the bird said that we could probably go see the rams I and the sheep. I can. I believe in him. I think we're perfectly. Now, according to some. If you go over here and park at Hemingway Park, Boulder City, Nevada, you'll be able to see some sheep. There's a little parking area. Supposedly they come out here and they graze along the grass, but I don't see any sheep out here at the moment. But well, we're gonna walk around and see what we can find. Relax and enjoy the wildlife of Boulder City here at Hemingway Park. One of the only places in the world where you can see desert bighorn sheep this close as they journey down from the river mountains into the park. The sheep are normally active during warm months. Okay, that maybe that's not, this wouldn't be classified as a warm month. Maybe we'll get lucky though. From up here also, looking down into the valley, pretty good view of Lake Mead. And not too far from here to the Hoover Dam. We are scouring the mountains here, the terrain for rams or long horn sheep. Nothing. A lot of people hiking. A lot of people out here at the park. But nothing up in the hills. I have seen them before. I've seen a ram before on the side of a cliff and it's amazing how they can just climb up the side of the steepest incline like it's nothing. You wouldn't, just by looking at the animal, you wouldn't think they'd be able to do that, but they can they can go at like a complete 90 degree incline and just stand at the top of a mountain like it's no big deal.
order to get to the Hoover Dam, you have to go through this little checkpoint up here. Inspection station. I want to drive a car that looks like that. Okay, I want that car. What kind of a car is that? That is a... I don't know. I don't know what that is. I want it. That was a piece of cake. They just kind of waved us through real quick like. And now heading to the Hoover Dam. It's going to be windy up there on that bridge. We're going up there? Is that where we're going? That's where we're going, right? right? Is there another place to see it without going on the bridge? I'm not familiar. So there's the Hoover Dam where you like walk across the Hoover Dam. And okay. then there's the overhead bridge going over. Oh, okay. I'm down for whatever. Alright. I just want to see the dam. The dam dam. And that's the overhead. That's the overhead parking? A lot of people here. Okay, we've opted to go across the bridge. Parking down here was, you gotta be patient for the parking for someone to pull out. And then you park here, and now we're going up these stairs to the bridge. A lot of stairs going up that way. We have made it up to the top of the Hoover Dam. We're gonna be walking across the bridge, which I guess would be right across there. It runs parallel this very busy road. There are some rules. Number one rule, act responsibly. Do not drop objects from the bridge. Do not climb on hillsides. And no animals, except service dogs. This is slightly, slightly scary. I mean, you got traffic going to and fro at a very rapid speed right on the side of everyone walking by here. Enter at your own risk. I can see why. Look at this. You know, traffic coming towards us at like 65, 70 miles per hour. I mean, there is this little concrete barricade, but that's not gonna do much. Incredible. I haven't been up here in years. Years and years. Breathtaking. A modern marvel. Construction marvel. Look at this. It's wild. Right? Look at this. The fact that something like this exists just blows my mind. Thankfully, The world is not relying on me to create things of this magnitude or they just wouldn't happen. I wouldn't even know how to build a two-story house. Even a one-story house, let alone a skyscraper or a dam this size. How you feeling? You nervous up here? It's, it's way too high. Yeah, it's pretty high. <laughs> I will say though, I was out here like maybe eight or nine years ago, and it was a lot windier, so the wind isn't too bad, thankfully. What makes me nervous is the traffic going by at rapid speeds. And the height. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's pretty dang high. It's pretty dang high. You know, I didn't really think about the height until you mentioned it. I was so worried about the traffic. It's too, it's like looking down at the water is making me so nervous. The water? That's what gets you? I mean, don't yet. Yeah, only get as close as you're comfortable getting close up to it. That's, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty high. So you were saying, what do you think is taller, the stratosphere or this? Yeah, I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable at the stratosphere, but this is, this is scary. I don't really know. I would say the stratosphere is taller. Yeah, the stratosphere is a lot taller than this. The stratosphere was like 1,100 feet, I believe. We can check some dimensions on the way out to see exactly how far. I'm going to say the stratosphere is considerably taller than this. Scene. Jimmy Olsen right up there. 
obviously Vegas vacation as well. They go to the, they go here. But I just think of Jimmy Olsen and Superman. This thing busting apart. And you can drive across it too. It doesn't even seem real it's so far down there. I got it. Nailed it. Have you ever driven across it? Can we drive across it? We should drive across it. You used to, that was the way to get through before the bridge was here. You gotta go across. Oh, so before this bridge that we're standing on was here? Yeah. You had to go over the actual dam. Yeah, so they obviously built it to bypass that whole thing, make it a little bit quicker. You did it though, you faced your fears. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable. You went to the Monster Museum, oh, oh. which was horrifying. Yes. What was scary, the Monster Museum or this? This! <laughs> You're getting comfortable though. I'm You're holding on for new life. You got, I got this thing like wrapped around my wrist multiple times. This is scary. And usually have a big truck rolls through, the whole bridge shakes. It does. It's not that windy up here though. Yeah. I've been up here in the past where you almost lose your hat. Wearing hats or glasses. Here they are. That's brutal. There are a lot. A lot of people up here. Look at this track. Everybody loves to honk when they go through here. There's a lot of people up here admiring the handiwork of this modern marvel. Incredible. I mean, it's scary being up here, but yeah, it's incredible to look at. That's where we were. We were all the way up there. Oh my goodness. I think I'm glad we went up there first instead of like driving underneath it and then get up there because that is up there. We're gonna drive across the bridge. That is something else. We were all the way up there, Danny. Wow. It's unbelievable. You can park up here and walk along the walk along the edge. And then right up here are these two winged guardians almost. That's kind of what those remind me of. You got a lot of people up here. All right, we found a parking area up here as well. So in this section it says stay within the parking area, do not cross the guardrail, which is here. But we are gonna go walk across, and I'm gonna get the Jimmy Olsen view from over there where he was like kind of, where he was at. One thing I've never done, I've been up there about a decade ago and I've driven, I think I drove across here when I had my RV, but I didn't stop and get out and walk over there, so I'm gonna do that now. I really like these camper vans over here. Camper trucks. The area we're standing now is like where a little reservoir was where if the water got too high, it would like go into here, but you could see where the water level used to be. There's still water over there in the lake, but not as high as it once was. Yeah, it's amazing. You just see the discoloration where the water used to be up to. But basically on this side, it used to come almost all the way up to the top here. Incredible how tall this is. Yeah, this is something. It's really, it's right up there, a little bit ago. Really something else. Yeah. 
and it's at an incline so it's not straight down it's almost like I don't want to compare it to like a slide but it kind of goes at a very steep angle really mind-blowing when you really try to wrap your head around the engineering of this not even like not even necessarily the dam but even like just that bridge You know, speaking of Superman, the movie, what would happen if there was a bad earthquake right over here? I mean, is this thing made for earthquakes? Oh my god, stop. <laughs> you get nervous? <laughs> Don't say earthquake up here. Named after Herbert Clark Hoover. 31st president of the United States. Now I'm going to admit, I did not realize that it was named after Herbert Hoover. I don't know why they ever put that together till just now. The inception, completion, and realization of the benefits of, the of this project are due to the wisdom and vision of those whose names are here on inscribed. Oops, sorry. I like the uh, Art Deco Hollywood style doors they got here too. Also, this is the state line, the Nevada Arizona state line. You can see Arizona on this side, Nevada on that side. Right here. Right here in the middle of the. I don't know though, because there's there's cliffs in Hawaii that are 100 Back when they were constructing this, they ended up having a mascot. It was a dog that would like kind of spend time around the construction crew. It was the construction crew's mascot. It was found by, as a puppy by workers at the construction camp passed on in 1941 and laid to rest here. But he is known as the dog who owned a dam. I'm noticing they did, he wasn't given a name, he was just the dog. But here he is going to work with a paper sack. They gave him, commissary prepared him a single daily meal every day. But no mention of a name, just the dog. Here's how he met his demise. Grown men wept as they jackhammered a tomb for him. Scaling is the process of removing loose rock from a cliff face. High scalers dangle from ropes using jackhammers to drill holes. Dynamite after a blast return to pry off the loose rock. And here is a worker right up here that is perched on the side of this rock with the bridge off in the distance. And that bird flying by. All right, gonna head out. Back towards Vegas. You know, I'm just noticing earlier we're talking about like horror shirts. You're wearing a used band shirt, but I think this is from, I think this is from uh, House on Haunted Hill. This here, the skeleton here holding the heart. I think that's from House on Haunted Hill. I have no idea. You don't know? No. I think that's what it is. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for today. I don't even know if anyone can see us because the sun is in a weird angle. Yeah, I think so. We're good. We did Boulder City. We went full on Boulder City. We really did today. We did a lot in Boulder City. Monster Museum, braved fear of heights. We did the historic area of Boulder. Oh, so I like the downtown of that as well. Saw the guy who is now immortalized for refilling toilet paper. Oh, that's right. And that's it. Make sure you check out Danny702's channel. And I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. over.